that I was uh, studying. It was in my heart about uh, God, put in my heart about how God defended us. This scripture says that if God is for us, He can be against us. You know, a lot of scriptures that God is giving us the assurance that He is for us. For greater is He who is in us than He that is in the world. So we we'll never, we cannot be shaken because our God is immovable. Amen. Praise God. So uh, when I was reading the in Second Chronicles, sorry. <laughs> when I was reading in Second Chronicles, chapter fourteen, chapter fifteen, and sixteen. Uh, the, uh, it was the story of King Asa, the king of Judah. When I was reading in chapter 14, uh, Asa, you know, King Asa is a very good example of a man who made a splendid beginning but had a tragic ending. You know, there are lots of people who make a very, very splendid beginning, but ends up nothing. And King Asa, the king of Judah, is a great example to all believers and Christians who started a very, very good leap, but ended poorly. That was in the. Uh, he was very good in chapter 14. Early in his reign, he relied on the Lord and gave him a great victory. One of the qualities of King Asa was he relied on the Lord. Everything. He trusted God. Whatever the situation, circumstances, difficulties, even attacks of the enemies. He always come to God and rely on God. That's why in Jeremiah 17 verses 7 and 8, blessed is the man who trusts in God. He was blessed. And it's because he trusted God, God gave him, gave him victory. There's something when we trust God, it's our benefit. Not only for the glory of God, but it is also our benefit when we fully trust God. Now, when I move forward to uh, chapter 15, he even believed the prophet's message and removed idols from the land and called the people to reaffirm their loyalty or allegiance to God. That's in chapter 15. There was, a, there was a prophet. He was the son of Odin. His name was Azariah. Azariah gave him a message about what will happen and gave him the instruction of what he's going to do. King Asa responded with all his heart because he loved God with all his heart. And so he listened the instruction and the messages that the prophet gave it to him. That's one of his great qualities. Quality. Verse 15, he even removed his very own mother, the queen mother for her idolatry. So totally, absolutely King Asa, he was a king of no compromise. He doesn't compromise. If it's sin, sin. If it is against God, that's it. God must be the priority. God must be heard. God must be followed. Even his very own mother. He deposed his very own mother because his mother built an Asherah in the high places and King Asa demolished all those abominations before the Lord God Almighty. But, let's go to chapter 16. 
But in the 36th year of the reign of Asa, Asa was the king of Judah, and Baasha is the king of Israel. So Israel was turned into two kingdoms, the southern kingdom and the northern kingdom. The southern kingdom is Judah, and the northern kingdom is the other ten tribes of Israel. There are two tribes in Judah. So King Asa was the king, and King Baasha was the king of the ten tribes. King Baasa, Baasa king of Israel, came up against so the northern kingdom came up against the, the southern kingdom, against Judah and built Ramah, that he might let none go out or come in to Asa king of Judah. Then Asa broke. This is the very exciting. Then, remember the first two chapter, uh, chapter 14 and 15, he relied on the Lord. No compromise. Love the Lord. Everything for the Lord. But in Verse 2 in chapter 16. Then Asa brought silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of the Lord and of the king's house and sent to Bin Hadad, king of Syria, who dwelt in Damascus. What did he say? Verse 3. Let there be a treaty between you and me. As there was between my father and your father, see, I have sent you silver and gold. Come. Break your treaty with Baasha, king of Israel, so that he will withdraw from me. See? Verse 4. So, what the king of Syria said, uh, uh, reacted, so Ben Hadad heeded king Asa and sent the captains of his armies against the cities of Israel. <laughs> they attacked Aijun, Dan, Abel, Ma'in, and all the storage city of Naphtali. Five. Now it happened when Baasha heard it that he stopped building Rama and ceased his work because he was afraid of the king of Syria. So he backed out, King Baasha, in panic, leaving all his materials for building Rama. Now in verse 6, then King Asa took all Judah and they carried away the stones and timber of Rama which Baasha had used for building and with them he built Giba and Mizpah. Verse 7, and at the time Hanani, Hanani was the prophet, the seer, the seer came to Asa. God is not sleeping. So God saw what Asa did. He sent a seer, a prophet, Hanani, to say something to, to King Asa. And said to him, because you have relied on the king of Syria, and have not relied on the Lord your God. Therefore, the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. Next verse. Where the Ethiopians and the Lubim, not a huge army with a very many chariots and horsemen, yet because you relied on the Lord, he delivered them into your hand. In verse 9. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is loyal to him. In this you have done foolishly. Therefore, from now on, you shall have wars. During the time when he relied, in chapter 14 and 15, he relied, acknowledged, and believed in God. There was rest. There was no war. But now that he trusted the king of, bin, the king of Syria, Bin Hadad, as his covering, now God will send him wars. Trouble will come. Next verse. Then Asa was angry. First, in verse 15, he was listening to the prophet Hanani. Okay, Prophet Hanani, I will listen because I love the Lord. Now in verse 16, he was angry with, oh no, that was King Asaria. And now he was angry with Prophet Hanani. Then Asa was angry with the seer and put him in prison. What he did to the prophet? He put the prophet in, in prison for he was enraged at him. Because of this, and Asa oppressed some of the people at that time. Next, note that the acts of Asa first and last are indeed written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel. Next, and in the 39th year of his reign, Asa became diseased. He was ill. He was sick. 
What was his disease? Infection of his feet. And his malady was severe, yet in his disease he did not seek the Lord, but the physicians. Still he hardened his heart. Before he was seeking God, God, what I will do now? Right straight, reject God. He consult the physicians. <coughs> Next, 13. So Asa rested with his fathers. He died in the 41st year of his reign. Verse 14. They buried him in his own tomb, which he had made for himself in the city of David. And they laid him in the bed. Take note of this. They laid him in the bed which was filled with spices. That means with aroma, with fragrance. And various ingredients prepared in the mixture of ointments. So it must be his body was full of smell good. It smells good because of this fragrance of spices. So they made a very great burning for him. Well, he was relying before God. In chapter 14 and 15, he really did a splendid start. He had a very, very good record before God. But in chapter 16, he ended up groaning, dead, rotting. Let's take a look in verse 2, 16 verse 2. The Asa brought silver and gold from the treasuries of the house of the Lord and of the king's house and sent to Ben-Hadad, king of Syria, who dwelt in Damascus. He took the Lord's treasure. What did he do? Why he took the Lord's treasure? To buy protection from the pagan king. Because he is afraid of the king of Israel. He was afraid of Baasha. Instead of crying out to God, God, I have an enemy, Lord, protect me, Lord Jesus. Not like, protect me, Father God. But what he did, all the silver and gold in the temple, that was God's property. We're not allowed to take God's property. He took God's property, brought it to the king of Syria and as a payment for their protection. God was not pleased. God was not happy. Verse 7. And at the time, Hanani the seer, or the prophet Hanani told the king what was wrong. Let's take verse 7, 8, and 9. And at the time, Hanani the seer, the prophet, came to Asa, king of Judah, and said to him, Because you have relied on the Lord of Syria, or the king of the, on the, relied on the king of Syria, and have not relied on the Lord your God. Therefore, the army of the king of Syria has escaped from your hand. <coughs> verse 8. Were the Ethiopians and the Lubim not a huge army with very many chariots and horsemen? Yet because you relied on the Lord, He delivered it into your hand. If you re rely on the Lord, God will deliver your enemy into your hand. But in verse 9, For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show Himself strong. Take note of this. The eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show Himself strong on behalf of those whose heart Whose heart is loyal? Whose allegiance? He took the treasures in the temple to buy protection from the pagan king. Has a failed to persevere. Even God the Father is looking for our perseverance. Asa failed to persevere. He did not persevere. He failed to perse persevere in seeking God during his later years. Sometimes, oh, I'm already Christian for 10 years. Then you just... And you don't realize that you're already in the crawling situation. You had a very big leap. He had a very big flight. But he never thought that he will 
form gradually. God is calling us to persevere. Don't count how many years you've been Christian. Don't count how many years you've been serving God. Count every day as your day of redemption. Think that today you have just you have just received the touch of God and you're waiting for the coming of the Lord. Because they have always knew evil money. Don't be counting how many years. I've been Christian for 30 years, but I never think that I've been 30 years Christian. I always think that just today I encounter God. And even tomorrow I'm waiting for God's coming. Be always, always think that a day is a day refreshing for you. Don't be counting your accomplishments, your efforts. Your talents, your giftings, your skills, the number of years, no, don't count. What is important is now, because now is salvation. Now, because with God we come now. And when He sees us that we are loyal, and we, we persevere in spite of trials, troubles, problems, even to the point of death. God will be pleased because of what He is looking into our hearts is our loyalty to Him. Our loyalty. King Asa is an example to all believers that it is indeed possible to fall away from faithfulness to God even after participating in a great spiritual reformation. He had an experience of great victory. He had an experience of encountering God's voice. And he had an experience of victory upon victory. But he failed in the end. Now, in this chapter, there are three pictures. There are three evidences of Asa's spiritual backslidden, spiritual decline given in this, in, this three, uh, in this chapter. The first one is in verse 7 and 9. We already read that one, so 7 and 9. He stopped relying on God. It's so dangerous if you stop and we will stop relying on the Lord and if we will stop trusting God. The first evidence that Asa is declining, he declined. He stopped relying on the Lord and trusted instead in human resources. He trusted in human resources. Okay, call, call the king of Syria. He had lots of chariots and armies and everything. Here's the, here, here's the treasures now from the temple. Gold and silver, pay him. Number two is reject, he rejected Second picture is, he rejected and persecuted the prophet of God. It's so dangerous when you persecute the prophet of God and a messenger of the Lord. He persecuted. He was angry. Asa was angry with, with the prophet because of this. He was so enraged that he put him in prison. At the same time, Asa brutally, this is a very familiar word, brutally oppressed some of the people. He oppressed some of the people. That's why what had happened before in the Old Testament, it always comes back in this very time. We cannot say that the church will not be persecuted. We will always be persecuted, even to the point of death. The devil, the demons, and the evil has always to say something bad. Has always say, has always to say something not nice and put down. We're not yet in prison. He was in prison. 
But in the last days, we will be experiencing tribulations and persecutions. Because you are a child of God. You are a messenger of God. Everyone here has a call. But you cannot say that, oh, no one can, can persecute me. Because I'm lying. Take it easy. Even if you are taking it easy, when the Holy Spirit of God will work upon you, then you will start to shine. Then you will be fruitful. Then the enemy will try to stone you. In Luke chapter 6, verse 23, what's the promise of those who are persecuted? Of those messengers or people of God who have been undermined? Rejoice in that day and live for joy, for indeed your reward is great in heaven. We're not looking for the reward here on earth. Our reward is in heaven. For, for in like manner their fathers did to the prophets. We will be rewarded. You know, the, the, the very uh, strong blow and heavy, you know, attack. It's also, it is also parallel to the reward that you will be receiving. Just rejoice. So in the Old Testament people, people of Israel rejected the prophets and their messages many, many times. Even Jeremiah, Jeremiah was a crying prophet. He was not crying because he was, sing, he, he was single. He was a crying prophet because most of his messages was rejected. And he was even put into prison. He was insulted, put and say everything against him under the sun. But he was rewarded by God. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 28, churches today should bear in mind that God sent prophets, people who can speak to your lives. And God has appointed this in the church. First apostle, second prophets, third teachers. After that, miracles, then gifts of healing, helps and administrations, varieties of tongues. But he is sending prophets in the, in the New Testament. Not only in the Old Testament. God is raising prophets, teachers, miracles, and other gifts. There's healing and tongues and all kinds of gifts. Various. And there are apostles. No one knows that there are, will be raised up here apostles, and teachers, and prophets. God is sending you. But if someone will touch you, they will be harmed. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. God is raising up his people, even in this last days. Why? What is the purpose? For the purpose of calling both, both leaders and people for, to live for righteousness and faithfulness to all scriptures and separation from the world. But what happened? Asa resisted the word of God's servant. If a person will resist the word of God, when a servant of the Lord will speak, then that will be the start of trouble. Resisting the counsel, resisting the, the, the guidance, res resisting the word that's given to you. Never, never re resist if God will send you a messenger to speak for your life. Even if you don't like it. Receive it. Because that is for the good of our own soul. The third evidence, why Asa? Uh, the third evidence of his decline. 
when physically afflicted, in verse 12, when physically afflicted rather than first seeking God for discernment and deliverance, he exclusively sought for help or the help of his physician, who perhaps used incantation and medical remedies of the occult. Sometimes there are people when they are in pain, severe pain, trouble, and they can hear that they are diagnosed of this one, they will panic right away. Thinking of what to do. Seeking counsel to men who are experienced and like this. I tell you, <coughs> go to God because he's the healer first. Then God will tell you. If there is a blessing when you go to God first, Lord, the doctor told me like this, and like this, what will I do? Cry out to God. Heal me, Lord. Jeremiah cried out, Heal me, O oh Lord, and I will be healed. Save me, and I will be saved. First, you go to God. Whatever the problems, whatever the trials, whatever the testing is, go to God. Because He knows His eyes run to and fro. You know, in verse 9, He knows your situation. His eyes, the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong on behalf of those whose heart is faithful. Whose heart is loyal to him. His eyes keep on watching what happened to you. God knows our heart if you are loyal or not. And what Every your problem will come or to come in the future. He knows that. And he is waiting for you to cry out. And then when you cry out, then he said, I will listen. I will answer you. I will be with you. I will never forsake you. But if you will not cry out to God, who will answer us? Who will answer us? Don't rely on what the man can do. Man is limited. He's bounded. God is limitless. Boundless. Why I will go to the bounded and limited? I will go to the God who can do all things. If I have some pain, I'm not bragging, but I am, ex I, I am experiencing from time to time some pains that I cannot understand. But my mind, there's something whispering, the evil is whispering, oh, that's deadly. Oh, how many days or how many years will go? And I said, go, go from my mind, go from my thoughts. And I will kneel down before God and cry out. Because I knew my, my God. That when I come to him, he will answer me. Lord, heal me. I have this pain, Lord. It's excruciating pain. Heal me, Lord. And I know that you will heal me because you are the one I call. He said in his word, call unto me and I will answer you. He's not a man that will lie. Man are liars. But God is not a liar. When he said it, he will do it because he is a God and a man of his word. He's bound of his word. He wanted us to call unto him, to cry out to him. But Asa was wandering, looking for physician. The, the, the sickness is the feet. I don't know feet too. The two foot, the feet infected. I don't know. I was beaten by a, I don't know that, unusual insect here in Ireland. Then when I was beaten, swollen straight. And I said, I look like I have a filaria, you know. <laughs> so what I did is, I said, Lord, I will not go to the doctor right away with this because they will give me antibiotics. So I, I just, I have lots of plants in my garden. I have oregano, oregano is an antibiotic. So what I did on oregano, I crushed it. <laughs> Like 
<laughs> you know, like the ancient times, I will learn you. So I I cross the oregano and rub into the beating parts. Then I hung it. Then start to pray to the Lord, Lord, hear me, Lord. I use this oregano, Lord, your plant. You created this plant for my medicine. Will you let this uh, swelling, Lord, you know, go? So it will not go right away because God will test your patience and you will really believe in God. So it takes two days. Then there's excruciating pain. Lord, the doubts began, began now to, you know, play around. Is oregano really is effective? You know? <laughs> <laughs> so play around. So I, was, I, I went out the garden and looked for parsley. Is it coriander? <laughs> you know, look, it, I have coriander. Is it coriander? Coriander? Uh, coriander? I, I Google it. Gulu gulu. I Google it. Uh, coriander. Oh, it's not. It's only for the high blood. Oh, that's not for the high blood. So, Lord, I stick. I will go back to oregano. So I went to. I go back to. I went to oregano. Crush again. So rub again the oregano and pray over. So I had to pray over. So pray over. So then I I waited. Lord, will you give me a sign? When this swelling will go. Lord, when I open this Bible, give me a word, Lord. When I open the Bible in the book of Hosea, from three days, three days you will be healed. What? What? Thank you. Three days I will be healed. So, two days tomorrow that will be healed. So, the next day, it's gone down, down, down. So, the, after I think, you know, uh, dinner time, it's gone. It's a matter of believing. It's a matter of believing. Because he, he said that if you go to, he said, Lord, if I go to Dr. Ryan, he will give me right straight antibiotic. I don't want that antibiotic. I want natural antibiotic. See, what God wants us, whatever happens, don't be panicked. Don't be thinking, oh, I will die, I will die. So, no. Don't be thinking. Sometimes, you know, the devil will just whisper you, you know, our mind becomes a battleground, a playground of all these doubts and unbelief. Then panic. You'll be sweating with panic. Then try to repent. <laughs> just to prepare ourselves. <laughs> I think God's laughing. You know, you just, just, what God says, it's very clear. Call. Call unto him. Just call him. He will answer us. Even people will you know, put us down. Call God. There's a lot of chariots and armies in the heavenlies. He can send it. Angelic, you know, angelic armies, warring armies, you know, to fight against our enemies. Call on God for rescue. Don't call the king of Syria. Don't call the king of, you know, the, king, the pagan king to, to back you up. What God says, the battle belongs to the Lord. If God is for us, who can be against us? Every battle of ours, each one of us has a battle. But remember this. Ask God for protection. God, cover me. Fight for me. Let my enemies be scattered. Shut down the mouth of my accusers. Ask God. He's the only one who can fight for you. Do not go to the bouncer. Will you? I will pay you monthly and be my, be my bouncer who will fight for me, fight for them. You know? I'll fight, to, fight them, you know? In 16 verse 9, For the eyes of the Lord reigns throughout the earth. He searches throughout, especially to those who are faithful. Now, let's talk about hearts who are fully committed to God. Hearts who is loyal to him. Let's check our hearts. Are we really loyal to God? Because that's what he's looking for. We keep on singing this song where you're looking into my heart, into my heart. No, if the Lord will look at our heart and there's no loyalty in it. Because when God will come, He will not look at how how much.
much is your, you know, outfit? How thick is our foundation? No! He's looking into our hearts. That is how his, his eyes is searching throughout the whole world to look only for those people who is loyal to him. He is not looking to those people who is not loyal to him. Excuse me? He's only looking to those people who are loyal to him. The question is, are we loyal to God? Of course, wives are loyal, wives are loyal to their husbands. Husbands are loyal to their wives. I'm trying to be loyal. John, this morning, oh, Brenda, it's uh, early now. You have to change your clothes now. So my flesh is. I have to do something, but I said, oh, oh, oh yes, yes, John. Oh, I said, oh, all right, you're very submissive. <laughs> <laughs> so, loyal. Loyal. God is looking for the loyalty. If we really love God, Asa in chapter 14 and 15, he loves the Lord. He obeyed every message. No compromise if he sin, sin, because he loves God. That's what God gave him reward. No war. You will be rested. You will rest. Your kingdom will rest for 10 years. 10 years you will be at peace. But we, if we are uns, unsubmissive, if we are not loyal to God, trouble. That's why in the last uh, scriptures of 16, God, Awhanani, the prophet, declared him, now because you don't rely on God, you will have wars from now on. Trouble will come. Rely. Rely on God. We're nearly finished now. This truth is also seen in Christ's evaluation. We'll go to the New Testament. <coughs> if we, we already, see Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, the seven churches, the truth in chapter 16 of 2 Chronicles is also a picture. God is looking the loyalty. When Jesus will come, he is looking to the loyalty of the hearts of the Christian. Now, the first church there is the loveless church, persecuted church, that is in Revelation chapter 2 and chapter 3, the corrupt church, compromising church, dead church, faithful church, lukewarm church. Which church do we belong? Dead, lukewarm, corrupt, compromising? Which church do we belong? Loveless, persecuted. I think we are a little bit persecuted. Now, are we loveless? Because of our heart. In chapter 2 and 3 in Revelation, where the contrast of faithful overcomers, the lukewarm members, and the overcomers, Revelation 3.15, look at this. <coughs> what Jesus said, I know your works. Do you remember King Asa? Chapter 14 and 15, he had a very, very splendid beginning. I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish you were cold or hot. Next uh, Uh, the next verse, uh, 17. But you say, you say, 16. Yeah, 16. So then, because you are lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will punish you out of my mouth. Now, Irish people here, they really, they really love hot tea. <coughs> and a drop of milk. Would you like the, uh, would you like tea? Yes, please. And a drop of milk. That means preserve the hotness. Because if you put a lot of milk, it's a little bit lukewarm now. <laughs> You'll be sick. But when Irish will say, a drop of milk. So preserve the hotness. Because it's so nice to drink hot tea. Now, so then because you are lukewarm, and neither cold or nor hot, I will vomit you out of my mouth. 
God wanted hearts that is on fire. That the fire of God set ablaze in our hearts for Jesus until he will come. In verse 21, verse 21 is to him who overcomes. This is the contrast now of a lukewarm church and an overcomer. To him who overcomes, I will grant you to sit. Imagine the reward. If we overcome every trial, troubles, and problems, unsurmountable circumstances, what's the reward? The reward is Jesus will grant you and me to sit with Jesus on his throne. And he is also, as he also overcame and sat down with his father on his throne. It's the reward if we are an overcomer. He will allow us to sit with him on his throne. Are we excited to sit on the throne with Jesus? They were chatting. Lord, did you remember when I took the money from my dad? <laughs> Then, and when I asked you, Lord, forgive me, then you forgive me. Oh, yeah, you're very, so a little bit chap there in heaven, you know? Can you imagine the reward? He will allow you to sit with him on his throne. Conclusion. When we are wrong, we should admit it. When we are wrong, we should admit it instead of trying to resist God. God is much stronger than our stubbornness. When Asa died, remember, when Asa died, his body laid on a bed of fragrant spices. Even he was dead, he smells good. Mixture with fragrant ointment. I think that includes oregano there. But his name was not as fragrant as it has been. It was just 7 verse 1. A good name. Remember this. A good name is better than precious ointment. As a laid on the bed of precious ointment. And the day of death than the day of one's birth. You know, the marks, it marks the beginning of a far better life with God. The day of death. When you die, persevere with God. Your fragrance, your fragrance is coming up and God is enjoying it. The fragrance of the death of a loyal child of God. Last verse. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take him lest he fall. In others' version, if you think you're standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. If you think now that you are strong, if you think now that you are okay, if you think now that you are immovable, be careful that you don't fall. If the word of God this morning speaks into your heart, feel free to stand as, as a gesture that you will say to God, God, I want to submit. I want to trust in you. And I want whatever the problems and trouble help me to trust and rely on you. Give me the grace to call unto you, not to panic. Feel free to stand and we will pray. Let's uh, take a few minutes to talk to God. Search. Ask the Lord about uh, do we have a loyal heart to God? 
because he is looking at our hearts and he is willing to help those who have a loyal heart. Whatever troubles you, whatever troubles you have now, whatever the fear you have now, if you have that fear of trouble, if you have enemy, <coughs> God said, call unto me, and I will answer you. Call unto him. And if there is something that you need to say sorry to God, like what, like what Asa did, rely on others than God, say sorry to God now. Okay, let's take time. Take time and talk to God, everything that is in your heart. If you want